Hello everyone, this is the Good Captain. Welcome to another video in my Let's Play campaign series. This is uh, Rising Sun, and we're playing the Link campaign game titled Follow the Philippines, and this is the 11th mission titled They Are a Broken Foe. So, uh, just a, we're going to do a few points of housekeeping before we jump into this scenario today. So, previously I'd kind of just... Uh, in a disordered fashion, sort of would read the historical and kind of tell you what I was doing and um, and then push units around the map and go for the major victory. But moving forward from starting this video and, and moving on to all the rest, I'm going to standardize my openings um, and my closings. And mostly my openings is going to uh, be a little different. Uh, and I created a sort of a, a standard procedure I'm going to follow. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. But uh, before I get that to that, uh, I do hope that everybody, I hope uh, that that little video I made about the historical background was interesting. Uh, I, again, I thought it was pertinent just given how much time has elapsed and the, the huge influx of reinforcements that we received. I thought it was important to understand what the heck had happened with the Japanese in this time period. Um, I mean, there are many players who probably just like to play through, blast the enemy. I'm not one of those. I, I do appreciate the historical aspect. Um, so yeah, uh, this is April 7th, and there are two days left before the Americans crumble on Bataan and, and capitulate for all intents and purposes. Uh, Americans would hold out on Corregidor, or units would hold out, I should say, uh, you know, Filipino and American units, uh, elements of those units would hold out on Corregidor until I think May 4th. So, you know, just, just under a month from this day, there'd still be active resistance. But the Bataan Peninsula was uh, really a kind of an amazing fight so early in the war. And the title of this scenario is pretty accurate. They are a broken foe. So, Remember in my last video, my little intermission that I just did, that the Americans really did win a fairly decisive victory, crushing two battalions at the Battle of the Points, and in a, sort of a, a grinding seesaw, grinding mess of a battle along the main line of resistance. Um, uh, in our in the previous battle, uh, it was really decisive in favor of the Americans. It was so much so that there was some talk about uh, Orion. That was the name I couldn't remember, sorry. So the battle at Orion, on the Orion line there, it really was so consequential that American command really did, uh, you know, there was talk about counterattacking, about moving forward and attacking. And uh, uh, even a relatively or weakly supplied unit unit or army may have been able to, but the American and Filipino units that were making up the defense of Bataan really, really had no, really no reinforcements coming. They were on half rations at a very early start in this campaign, and they really just got weaker and weaker as time went on. And the Japanese knew they had them surrounded and could kind of just siege them out, so to speak. So that's why we have this huge time lapse. Uh, from late January, uh, or from basically, yeah, late January, it was our last battle, but the Battle of the Points was mopped up, you know, in mid-February, and they really were left alone for about a month and a half, uh, for all intents and purposes. But, you know, starvation, not starvation, but low ammunition, low supply, um, uh, you know, including food, it had had an effect on the morale. And so by this time, yes, the American and Filipino army units should be pretty, pretty ragged. So we'll see how this pans out. Um, but now I'll very quickly go through how I'm going to be doing at the start of every one of my new scenarios. And I'm going to kind of follow a little template that I made. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is read the historical and review the turn length. So I hope you're feeling rested, Commander. While your battalion was being rested, the 65th Brigade attacked along an inland route through the mountains. It's taken them a while, but we were able to flank the Americans just south of Orion and destroy their 31st Division. 
Still, the Americans fight on. So today, we continue the attack along the coast road. The Americans have established a makeshift defense line near the town of LeMay. Breaching this is your immediate goal. However, a kilometer or two south of the town is an oil tank farm. As you can imagine, we can use that oil. You must move quickly and capture the oil tanks intact. You must continue to be aggressive. The war is moving on to other theaters, and we are being left behind. The faster we finish off these American dogs here in the Philippines, the faster we can move on to greater objectives. This is an 18 turn scenario. So, I feel like we have a lot of time for the ground that we have to cover from our uh, start units to where we're going to be going here, but um, we'll talk more about that in a moment. So that in the, every scenario from here on out, at the start, I'll be doing a map overview, and we'll be covering elevation, significant, significant terrain, and objectives. So first, let's break out the elevation. To do this, you want to hit your four key on the keyboard. This way, you can see through the, the different colors um, the, the different types of elevation. And this darker brown color is obviously the highest elevation, where the darker green colors are the lower elevation. So when you understand this, you can see that there's a lot of high ground up here on the right side of the map. Some spurs that kind of don't really jut out, but sort of, um, you know, in a very tepid fashion, kind of push out. This one's probably the most pronounced. You have some streams. Really nothing super consequential in terms of elevation, um, at least relative to the objectives. Significant terrain. So we covered the elevation. What about the terrain? Well, the terrain is mostly uh, dry rice paddies. There's a couple of suburb hexes here making up Lemay with some village hexes. Nothing crazy there. Stream with a bridge. Uh, nothing, nothing to write home about, but this is interesting. These are industrial hexes, and they do stand out amongst the Pacific-style landscape. And so it's important to, one takeaway here that I'll say is these industrial hexes offer a 0.6 tem. A 0.6 tem is incredible. This means that you're only going to, if I have a unit that it's attacking, whatever value it's attacking with is cut down to 60% of that attack value. That's what a 0.6 tem means. It also has a negative three concealment and a plus four morale. This is beautiful defensive terrain. And if I were the enemy, honestly, I'd probably make some sort of stand up here in LeMay, sure. But I would gather whatever strength, 80 to 90% of my strength, and just stuff these hexes. Artillery be damned. These are, I would gr try to grind out the enemy on the approach by holding the, each one of these hexes and turning them into a little fortress. These are pretty brutal. Um, so the oil tanks, that's, that is definitely significant terrain. The objectives, well, they're all along the road, and there's three of them, totaling 250 points. So our axis of advance, the primary axis of advance, should be directly down the road. Um, and since there's 250 points, that leaves a deficit of 200 points to make to get to the major victory of 450. And that's going to influence us in that we will probably need to exit some pieces if resistance is truly sparse. Otherwise, to make 200 casualty points is not insane if there's a lot of enemy to fight. So support. What do we have in terms of air units? We have four Aichi D3A valves, and I have my little scorecard up here. These these valves are actually some of the best air units in the Japanese arsenal, with a soft attack of 28, a hard attack of 20. So this is really, they're really, really good. And that's all we have, so we know what plane is going to hit. We'll know every time. There's no random, because the planes are randomized, aircraft attacks are randomized. When you do close air support, you don't know what you're going to get, but we have the luxury of knowing exactly what we're going to get. Artillery, we have three on map, 75 millimeter field guns that are fixed. So that's great. That's, that's what I like. I like having at least three batteries. Three batteries is solid. And then um, smoke and star shells. We've got six smokes. Star shells, of course, it's not a night scenario. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll tie it all here together in the end. So victory. What is the plan? 
well, I should have slipped in here something about extra units in terms of support. We've got two companies on loan to us that are not from our battalion. That's, they're out on the right flank that's here and here. Now these are too far out to bring in to help in the main drive, so they're just going to push ahead uh, to their direct fronts respectively just to secure, help se secure the far flank. I imagine they must be there for something. I doubt that the scenario designer would have us pushing into empty jungle, so we'll see how that goes. And yes, how, what's the plan and how will we attack? Well, general attack of two company advance down the main axis of it, uh, the route of advance is going to be this coastal road, of course. So we'll lead off with two of our companies supported by inf guns and hagos. We'll keep um, one company sort of situated on the flank. So we'll likely... Uh, actually, I'm going to finish this up because I do have an idea, but let's clear out these different bullets before moving on. Uh, is there a need for smoke at start? I put this in there because I, there are certain scenarios where I do, there is a demand for to smoke something or to be aware that we should be smoking something uh, at some point in the scenario, and I'll go over where I think we will in, in the future here, in the future turns here. And then do we have enough time relative to all of the above factors to accomplish the major victory? And yeah, 18 turns is plenty of time to cover this distance. I forget what I, I'll, I'll write it down next time, but um, I did the calculations and it looks like a pretty standard type of thing, but we we'll always keep our eye on the time, of course. Now, about that smoke. Smokes, I think, are good when you have to mass um, uh, against an objective and cross some open ground. So. Uh, I think there's a, I'm going to show you what I mean by this, and around this oil tank farm, there's uh, this, uh, any machine gun team here would have a great and long view down this whole stretch of ground in the rice paddies and on the road. So this is a, this has a high potential of containing a, you know, if it, there is a defensive unit there, of it dominating this low ground. So smoking hex 7-9 would be, or even 7-10, would be uh, probably something we're going to be doing. Uh, also, to a slightly lesser extent, I'm, I'm hovering around these oil tank farms because I just think these are such, again, key pieces of terrain. When I click on these, I'm checking to see what they can see. I'm actually also interested in may, maybe smoking Hex 9-8 on approach to this oil tank farm, that Hex industrial Hex, if you want to call it that, on this side of the um, of the facility here. So those those areas look interesting. I don't think I'm going to be smoking anything here because we have this patch of jungle. If we didn't, uh, I, I'd more, I would probably definitely uh, throw down some smoke or maybe not. I don't know. But it, it, this will help shield our advance. So yeah, um, I think I covered everything. And I'm using this as a template just so you can see how I'm thinking. And this is something I'm going to do at the outset of every scenario. Um, it'll be rehearsed. It won't be something I'm trying to make up as I go. Uh, so I don't want to waste anybody's time. But uh, I think this is a good thing to do because I didn't just want to play this game and have people watch. I, I, I think it's good to, you know, I was re-watching my first scenario. And I was I talked about best practices and... I don't, I, th I don't think it's helpful if I just push units around a map and not explain how my brain's working because I've played this game a lot, again, um, and I think, I think I have something to offer. So hopefully, if anything else, it's entertaining. And if you learn something, that's great. Okay, cool. So let me take a little pause, and then we'll get rolling. Okay, I'm back. Uh, and what I was just doing in that little pause was checking and rechecking to make sure I knew what I wanted to do. And um, we have some ATR platoons now. We're not going to abuse these too heavily, I think. Uh, maybe we will. But the first turns are so important for positioning and for deciding on a strategy. And so what I want to do right now is put eyes on these two hexes and maybe even this one. Well, no, these two mostly because none of my forces can see these suburb hexes. And I don't know what's there, if they're fortified or not. Perhaps there's units there. So I'm going to roll out some of these anti-tank rifle platoons. 
that I've got and put them into a spotting position. I won't be using any of my other units and I'll explain why when we get to them. But if there's a machine gun there, a light machine gun, which is a common uh, enemy unit that we've been has been appearing recently, uh, they shoot at hex range 4. It's a uh, pretty good range, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So if there's a machine gun, this would be the hex that would uh, be the bait hex. So we don't. I'm going to avoid that hex and move here. I'm, again, the, the purpose of this is just to put eyes on uh, the enemy defenses. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this rifle platoon into that same position. Okay, and then the rest of this turn is going to be staging. So I'm going to stage this entire company. This leading company here, right in this hex. So just move one at a time, because you never know where the enemy is. I know I'm overstacking it, but remember that the first turn is the only turn where you're guaranteed to not be bombed by artillery or air units. So we take advantage of that. Okay. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to switch the flanks just to change it up a little bit and keep my brain fresh. Over here, again, we decided we were just going to go ahead and push forward into the jungle. Now, these aren't my units, so I'll be a little bit more liberal with them, but really there's not much, there's no trick to this really. We just got to kind of push forward. And if you're unsure, if you, if you can get to a hex, just dab the F2 key this and just see what the guy the costs are and you can do the math in your head and if you can't do it in your head just pull out a calculator like I do okay pretty basic stuff here we actually have an ATR rifle platoon and my adage is always lead off with your least mission essential units first and an ATR platoon is really not good for anything except what I'm doing for it with it right now in my opinion and everyone else will just again just moving one unit at a time slowly push forward okay and then this battalion headquarters will take the opportunity to go ahead and move while things are quiet so we'll double time and move up. You have a nice range with that. Um, this battalion headquarters has a nice range, so that's good. Okay, now we see a fortification here, so we're going to assume there's somebody in there. And we're going to always assume it's a machine gun. Two, three, four. And I'm liking this patch of kunai. The good thing about and bad thing about kunai grass is that you can't see through it. So it's a 0.9 Uh You get you have a little bit of concealment there, negative one. No morale benefit. But that's fine. We're we're going to take advantage of uh, the fact that it's basically a blind hex and stage another company. We're going to stage this. Uh, Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to stage the company back here. Right here. Yeah. So these guys will move up. Hmm. That's all right. We'll move you guys out here. Okay. I'm feeling inclined now that I've seen or just kind of realized this to push this company directly up against the edge of the stream here. Yeah, I'm sure we would have seen somebody. Yeah, we would have seen if there I don't think there's enemy there. Our at start units might have shoulda would have could have seen something there. So move up. 
Oh, I missed that. Okay, so that was, there is a machine gun there, and that is 4 hex range. So, a little mistake on my part, but that's good. Now we know he's there. And we'll definitely, we'll definitely, we we'll definitely need to move this guy out of the line of fire, and the only hex to move to is here. So he moves here now. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to move the, uh, actually I think I'm just not going to move anybody from here. Not this turn at least. So we're pretty much where we want to be there. And this last company is basically a designated reserve. Yeah, we just want one company moving on the road until we capture LeMay and then these two flanking companies out here doing what they're going to do to help and assist in the capture. What we do want to do though, still need to do, excuse me, is move our Hago tanks into position where they're going to be able to do some good. So let's take the rearmost Hago. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's a, this is a traffic jam hex. I just noticed this. Uh, if you have more than 12 SP on a road, it will, it will uh, make it so you, that nobody can use the road benefit. So the Hagos will have to pay the kunai grasp cost if I don't clear this blockage. So we'll move this guy here. Now we have eight, and when the Hago comes in, that's 11. And this is eight, and when the Hago comes in, that's 11. So we don't ever bust the 12 SP limit. This is blocked as well. So we'll move, we'll start with this Hago, the middle, middle Hago here. And yes, we've blocked the road here, but this is a hex we'll just have to pay for. I don't want to break them up. Okay. And I stay two hexes away because I just don't want someone coming out and then overrunning, attempting to overrun. So this to me is the appropriate distance uh, when you're when you're doing something like this, like using your tanks as infantry support like I am here. Okay, now the next thing we want to move into position is these infantry guns. And this guy's a 6 SP infantry gun, so the maximum we can have in one hex is 6, which means these guys basically need to, these troops <laughs> basically need to get out of the way. So we'll move up one hex here. Let's just go ahead and join these ATR platoons out on the beach for the moment. This troop will move here. And he'll stay where he is. So now we should have free reign. Yes, perfect. So we're going to move here and unload. So what I did was I hit the save action points for unloading button. We run him on up. Unload here. And next turn, next turn, the cost of firing is 40. And we could probably move him out on the beach. Let's check. Let's find the beach. And as long as it's under 60, we'd be able to get crack off a shot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to find this thing. Wow. Just a little pause while I figure this out. What the heck's going on? Yeah, so beach actually isn't listed. Um, but it's not a problem. We'll just hit the save a piece for firing button and then move it into the that location if we're able. Okay, we'll also do the same thing with this infantry gun, just a one hex shorter. So now our infantry guns are brought up, our platoons are staged, our hagos are on point, ATR platoons are in position to help with observation slash um, bait shots next turn. So I'd say this is a pretty good turn for staging. 
Lastly, we'll just move the commanding officer up along with his machine gun sections. Actually, there's usually an argument for this. To move your headquarters platoon on the first turn also is kind of a neat thing to do. And since we have these safe hexes, essentially, I think I'll move it now before the bullets start flying. So this is my first turn. Of course, we always close by cycling our units. Just making sure everything is accounted for. Then we'll bring down our artillery. Yeah, let's bring down, this guy definitely needs, this is a huge priority right here. Machine gun teams are never to be trifled with. So I'll put four on him, and I'll put two here. And this is such an important target for me that I'm actually going to drop an air raid. We're going to call in a Val close air support on this guy. So there you go. Okay. Let's check the time. Cool. Should get this in a few more turns in before we close this video. All right. Nice. All right, let's give the enemy its turn. So immediately we see these fortifications, so I'm going to just not click this allied player turn until I kind of observe what I can see here. So there's got to be units in both these hexes now. Um, pretty pretty convinced of that. 100 point objective, really the best defend defendable terrain in the area, and they're fortified, so there's probably some PA army scouts or machine guns in those hexes. Let's see. Oh, they just gave us our turn back. Let's see if we get an air raid. Yikes. Well, maybe I should have gone for smoke after all. But I chose not to. That was a terrible opener. We did no disruptions whatsoever in our initial barrage. Our air raid hit the wrong target and did no damage to the target it did hit, which is really sad. So, uh, but we really, I'm not too keen on burning up another turn, but let's start with the other flank first. Let's let my brain rest a little bit. Let the brain rest a little bit is always a good thing to do when you're not sure. So let's start with this. This is an easy easy no-brainer type maneuvers that we need to be basically need to be done. Okay. Again, this kunai grass is super thick, can't see through it. Take a look at what we can see. Nice, this ATR platoon actually was able to observe all these hexes. Doesn't mean that no one's in the jungle though. So why don't we go clear that, uh, we'll go clear those jungle hexes out for sure. Let's go here, here. So now we're pretty sure that all the adjacent hexes that this guy moved through are clear. Because it's very likely that when units become adjacent, uh, they'll shoot. The enemy AI will, units will, or will shoot and reveal themselves. Looks clear. Cool, we'll bring up the leader and the machine gun. Making good good progress over here, so much so that I think I'm comfortable enough to move the headquarters. Looks good. Alright, now back over to the main axis of advance. Okay, let's do some scouting. I'm actually going to use my two strength rifle platoon or uh, ATR platoon to lead off. I'm not going to use the one strength because notice the morale is so bad. We want to give these guys a chance to recover some morale. You do that by allowing more turns to roll by in the scenario. Eventually the morale will increase slowly. This is due to replacements. 
All right, so we'll move him. Uh, let's double time him just so we have more flexibility. We'll move him here and check for machine guns. Doesn't mean they're not there. We'll go here and check for machine guns with hexes. And then finally we'll move here and check for rifle platoons or machine guns. Okay, so we drew off one. Two. Well done, well done. Three shots. Excellent. And then they're showing us their positions. Four. Four shots. Now we counted them. We can see that the machine gun only shot once. So we actually want to... That was actually probably not the best bait range, but we don't want to use any other units really to bait that guy. Just ATR riflemen. Okay. So you're up. We'll go ahead and double time you as well. And you will basically go to the same hex. And that can happen. That was, uh, you know, a low morale unit has a really high probability of disappearing like that. So that is a sacrifice we make to the gods of campaign series. That's what our platoons are for. So we'll move up the next one. All right. This machine gun still needs to shoot before we push out our main troops. And now we're going to use a tough unit. And our toughest units are our rifle platoons. And we'll try to soak it up at range four using the kunai grass as cover where they have a 0.9 tem. So better than nothing. No morale benefit, but better than nothing. Okay, so here we go. There he shoots. And we just cross our fingers, and apparently we got away with it, so that's good. Okay, so these all three of these units are completely shot out. So the next thing I want to do to help support my troops is do what I call a hit and run with my infantry tanks. If you've been following me this far, you know this is what I like to do. That's where we just basically move adjacent after everybody's shot out, fire all together, and then just move back a hex. So we're going to move one, two... Taking care to just move one at a time because you just never know what's going to happen. Minefields, other anti tank guns shooting at you, other units are appearing, and then we'll hit the machine gun. Alright, perfect. So he, uh, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Um, he's still in a position where he can kind of mess with this flank, but he can't mess with the direct assault. So with our remaining Hago, we'll shoot this guy that's across the bridge. Because he's the next most important target. No effect, and we'll likely pull them back. Highly likely pull them back. But first, before we do that, let's move in some uh, suppression units. And this guy, machine gun team with the leader, is a good combination to do some damage. So we got a 9 strength firepower attack. We'll hit this guy here. Cool. No effect, but it's, we're doing the right things. Hmm. I was hoping for a disruption at this point. but Okay, the next thing we're going to do is find out how much a beach costs. Yeah, we can still move one hex and fire, and I use the save action points for firing command for that. So we'll move out onto the beach here. Line up a shot on these guys. Fire. No dice. Let's move, do the same thing here. Same kind of attack. Nothing, 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 nothing. Not good. So our, our supporting units couldn't put a dent in them. Our machine guns couldn't put a dent in them. Now we have to make a decision. Um, but I think we already kind of did. We've already started the attack, so... Yep. I'm going to commit. We're going to move... Yeah, we're going to move two spaces. Fire on the move. Sure, we'll fire when we get here. Shoot this guy across the bridge. And now we know there's a leader there. Whenever you see that kind of doubling up, you know there's a leader in there attached to him. So I was considering leaving these 
units adjacent to absorb shots, uh, but now I'm thinking I'm going to pull back. But that would expose my infantry, but I still don't, I just don't want to mess with a leader being adjacent to a good order, with a good order unit especially. Hmm. That's tough. That really puts my rival platoons out here in a really tough spot. Okay. So I think I'm going to call off any more units. I'm not going to order any more units forward, given how abysmal this attack is going so far in terms of its effect on the enemy. We're going to go ahead and stack up in this hex here. This is a safe hex. As far as I can tell, yeah. It appears to be a safe hex. And we'll just kind of maneuver this platoon across one at a time. Okay. Like that. Uh, our reserve platoon will basically stand fast. We'll get these wagons out of the way just to help clear the road. And uh, we'll need to clear this hex. So I'm, basically, I'm just going to be doing, these are sort of what I call anti-artillery type of activities, spreading everyone out so there's really no more than one, maximum two units per hex. So we'll move you here. Yeah, and we're going to move this uh, company commander and his machine guns right up the road because we'll have use for them next turn. And in the spirit of keeping our unit count down. Hmm. I think we'll move this guy here. And then reduce his ability to shoot down to short range because at range 3 he's not effective. And we don't want him to go low on ammo. We'll have need for him to be full ammo next turn. I'm actually going to open up an instance here, keep this reserve company truly reserve. Okay. Okay, for being the best we can be, um, I, I'm, uh, this is a high risk for artillery, high risk for damage. The last thing we're going to be doing though is uh, pulling back the hoggos. You know, there's a leader in there. We're going to let our infantry take this hit. They do get the Tem of the Rice Paddy, though, which is 0.9. No morale benefit, no concealment benefit, but we'll take what we can get. It's, I think, the best we can be. And we're going to call down our artillery. And I hate to say it, but I think we're going to have to call down Another air raid just to help soften these guys up. It's not good that all four are still in good order. So we're going to drop two here, two here, two here, and then call in an air attack in. Actually, let's make sure we can see this hex. Nope. Okay, so we need to fix this right away. Uh, I'm going to put a... Yep, that's going to have to be a rifle platoon. Yep. Uh, the best Tim. Light jungle at 0.7. Pretty good. We'll put it right here. And that will ensure that our artillery is accurate and that air raid, uh, they, well, we can assign an air raid there now. But I'm not going to put it on that hex, just in case artillery falls and he does retreat. Put it right. Nah, let's put it right on him. We want to try to get that guy. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, no smoke. The attack is on. Like we were right. We're right out uh, two hexes away. It's not a time to smoke anything. So give the enemy its turn, and we'll see what kind of artillery assets they have. 
That's a close one. Okay, one serious piece of artillery. Regimental or some sort of headquarters there. That shot was the most important one. Good, they shot the guys in the jungle. That's great. Good Tem there. So we have two airstrikes remaining. One headquarters is not pumping out supplies. One unit's low on ammo. That's a that's really good actually. And we've got zero five who can recover some morale that that, that failed to do so. So let's see if that air raid comes in. Good. Hmm. Not liking this. Well, the area was another failure. Didn't hit the right target. Didn't do anything to the target it did hit. And artillery, excuse me, was only able to cause two retreats, which is meh. But the main thing was we disrupted this troop here, this uh, rifle platoon. We will absolutely take advantage of this. Absolutely. I'm going to try to run this. I'm going to run the clock close to an hour. I'm going to try to do this turn plus one more before finishing this video. Uh, so let's start with the, let's give our brain a rest by doing this easy flank first. Double time and move two spaces. I just want to link, get this platoon closer to a rifle company closer to the the other its sister comp, uh, company for mutual support. Right here. Right here. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, and the rifle platoon or uh, ATR platoon will of course lead off. What looks like a good hex. Let's go here and then here to clear out these hexes. Here and here. Very nice. Okay, let's send you out a little bit. Hmm. Can we do you? Yeah. Okay. Just kind of get them out, spread out a little bit. When our second company joins up, we'll have a nice solid wall and we'll move forward here and just clear out whatever's there. If there's anything there. Okay. So far, so good. I'm worried about this artillery though. We really do need to get moving. We got tons of troops in the open. We know the machine gun's here. This fighting position, we could take it, but there's two good order rifle platoons adjacent to it, so it's not it's not looking too enticing at the moment. Sorry, a little interruption there. <coughs> All right, so first let's bait some shots. I think the best way to bait a shot is with this machine gun team. Hmm. No, I think the best thing to do is move one of these two guys in here. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Let's move one more in. And the company commander, battalion commander. Okay. That appears to be safe, so now we'll move this machine gun team up. And with the company commander. Select the target. Shoot. Reduce by one. Very good. Now these two guys that we just moved in will lay down some cover fire and shoot. And there's the command. You see that uh, guy was running away. This is really good. Okay, we're making some progress. 
All right, now, hmm. I think we need to bait this headquarters. So let's move you here and here. Okay, disrupted. And that's good because now we're gonna we're gonna do our hit and run. Here. Now hmm. you know there is some risk to doing this. We got a healthy platoon here and we don't know what's what else is there other than that retreated unit. So Yes, I believe now it would be prudent to bait a shot. And we will use this company that's been hiding in the kunai grass. Double time a unit and move here. Bait that shot. Bait the second one. Good, so he's shot out now. And that really is the most we can do to support this, what we're about to do. Because uh, we need to move into this hex. Make sure this makes sense. We're going to save action points for firing. When we move one, yeah, we'll be able to move one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so we got plenty of movements after we move in. We can move out, so even after firing. So let's move here and hope there's nothing but those retreated units there. I know there's a risk to doing this, but again, I just I want to break this line of resistance, and this is what hoggos are for. Okay, so that worked. It appears to have worked. Let me start stacking more troops. Good. Okay, excellent. So we're all on. And now we got to tar select a target. Uh, first thing we should do is uh, just recon this hex, and all we have to do is click on it. So now we see what's there. Okay, so who do we want to do some damage to? Well, first, I think let's get our inf guns in the, to the action. So first we'll move this inf gun here. Shoot this. Effect. And this inf gun is unfortunately out of the fight this turn. So that looks like it. Okay, so now back to the hoggos. Not wanting, don't want to shoot the disrupted guy, so it's really just do we want to shoot this headquarters or do we want to shoot this rifle platoon? I'm going to go for the headquarters. I think that's the most casualty producing unit, especially to tanks. So that was pretty good. We still have two more. We can dispense our firepower on this guy. Wow, reduced by two. Sorry, I clicked past that. Trying to get away from doing that, so anybody who wants to watch this can take their time and view the results. But that was a reduced by two and retreated. That was a really good hit. We still have one more, so we'll go ahead, just drop it on this guy. Oh, reduced by one, disrupted. Excellent hits. Excellent hits. Dang, these guys did really, really well. Dang, they did well. You know, they did so well. I'm thinking of keeping them here. Or is that too much to chew? That might be too much. Hmm, yeah, that's probably too much. Boy, it'd be great. But no. We need to go ahead and pull back. Let's get this rifle platoon in position. Yeah, give you here. And just keeping in mind the, the strength point limit on road usage, so I'm just kind of moving moving my pieces in a, in a certain way here. And now this rifle platoon will insert itself. And now what I've done is I've been able, I've got both these guys able to fire and still pulled my hoggos safely out of the town. And these, these really basically 
very naturally they need to shoot this guy adjacent. There's no reason not to. We don't want to. A leader is never something to joke around with. Just shoot those. Shoot these guys. All right. Well, we tried. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so it looks like we cracked this initial line. Um, let's move to some of the rest of our units here. That looks doable. Yeah, let's move here. Shoot this guy. Cool. Actually, we might now have him in our sights. Hmm. I can retreat one more time. Let's try. No effect. No effect. Now this machine gun can still shoot one more, so we'll shoot his guy. No effect. Let's, let's move into position. Ooh. Made a little mistake there. Yeah, I should have been aware that that was still there and then at four hex range, but that's the fog of battle. Uh, we can fix this though, so we'll pull him back. Give this guy no targets. Very good. Move to a crossing position here. Here. Go ahead and cross with all of these. Well, never. Just good habits. Move one at a time. Here. Here. Uh, and we still haven't run into the enemy yet, so we're just going to go ahead and keep taking advantage of that by moving this. This. Uh, these, these two companies that are on loan to us will just keep moving their headquarters up while, while we can. Okay, I like this. This is good dispersion. We've got looks like one unit per hex, pretty much, except for the point units. They, they certainly didn't call artillery down on their own position, so this is actually pretty safe hex. Okay, let's go ahead and risk this. This is uh, smoke's going to reduce the effectiveness of the artillery of my inf guns, I think, by half, and we'll go ahead and shoot. Pretty weak attack. Yeah. And we got a hit. Nice. Did a hit point worth of damage. And um, I think it's time to cycle and then close this turn. Okay. Artillery now. Hmm. There was an argument for pulling somebody right here so we could observe that machine gun. But you know what? I'm okay with mopping him up a, a turn after next. I drop two here, two in this fighting position, and two in this position here. Put a nice ring around this objective hex because I think they're going to try to retake it. There'll probably be some kind of a counterattack, given that that's a hundred points, and they're not keen on giving that up. No air raid this time. It's been kind of a joke so far, and of course no smoke since we're in the middle of the fight. Give the enemy its turn. This, very nice. Perfect. We see a native irregular platoon over here. Okay, very good. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Looks good. 
Alright, whatever. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, let me check the time. Yeah, we'll we're gonna grind through one more turn, just to put a, a, a dent into the next video. Uh, let's lead off with our anti-tank rifle platoons and go do some scouting. Hmm. Rather move more hexes than take the high ground with this guy, so we'll move here. Ooh. And there we go. He's disrupted, so he won't draw any more fire, but he found somebody. Okay. Yep, so let's continue to push up. Oh, we found another guy. Native irregulars. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy to short range. So he'll only shoot if somebody comes adjacent in this situation. And that's because he's fatigued. I don't want him coming low on ammo for any reason while uh, taking a crummy 50% fatigue shot. You can shoot, though. This is a good shot. Seven. No effect. Okay. Now we'll move this troop. This, this, all right, what can we see? Hmm, yeah, this is a decent shot, let's take that. Excellent, did a little bit of damage, made him retreat. And this company can just keep pushing up, I think. little behind, but that's alright. Now the headquarters will just camp out. Alright, so that battalion's done. Back to the main event. Hmm. Not disrupted, not disrupted. Both still capable of shooting. First thing, let's try to gun down some... Uh... Alright, let's just bait this guy's shot. Let's do that. Nice. And since the leader's pretty much used up, let's continue to use him. Yeah. So now we'll just kind of free up this machine gun to close the distance and crack off seven strength shot. Retreat. Okay. <clears throat> Push him into this hex. The only way we could bait a shot from that hex is no three hex range. I guess there was. Well, not much we wanted to really do about that. And then shoot somebody. Disrupted one. Very good, very good. And again, we gotta be keen on that machine gun. I think he's here. Which means he chose not to fire. Let's switch the flank a little bit, go to the left end, and uh, let's use our inf guns. Let's move forward one space. Shoot. Excellent. Yeah, let's move forward one space and shoot. Okay. This guy's disrupted. Just move into the cover there. Now we'll use our low on ammo hago to do a little bit of scouting. First we want to clear this road. So we'll use our low on ammo rifle platoon and move here. And voila. Reduce to three. To reduce to three. Hmm. Okay.
there is an opportunity to destroy this platoon and leader, and we're going to now work towards that end. We're going to use this low on ammo hago and clear out these village hexes up, up here. So one, two, three. Ah! Yeah, and they're fortified. So that's not happening this turn. But they have a... I think they have a one strength anti-tank value, so that's why we used these hoggos in that fashion. Ah, it was worth the risk, though. It really was. It's nice to get rid of the leaders. Okay. Let's do a little more scouting with these hoggos. Let's move here. Okay. The rifle to tune up here. We'll just shoot these guys. Again. Let's move in this full strength, full ammo platoon here. Shoot this guy a third time. Dang. It's pretty rough. Okay, let's hit him with the low on ammo. Again. Oh no. Okay, so we can't do it again. I'm actually going to hit him with the Hagos. I want this guy here. Yeah, okay, so we can fire and then move back. When it, oh, we're not going to do that, though. Yeah, no, We don't want to shoot him. Or else he'll be stuck in an overstack hex, and that's not good because we give the enemy a bonus. So. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we kind of ran out of options. Tough. Well, let's move you one hex and shoot. Why not? No effect. No effect. Yeah, let's push you guys up into this hill here. Up the elevation. Up. Up. And up. Cross. We'll definitely cross. Move up here. So we'll be over here to cross next turn. Alright, so we're pushing along here. Not doing as well as I hoped, to be honest. Not doing really. Not quite as well as we hoped. So double time these guys and get them up into the fight. All right, take a little pause. Be right back, and then we'll close this video. Uh, yo, I'm back. So yeah, we're just gonna clean up this turn, wrap up, close this video. Let's move these Hago tanks into the middle of the suburb. Definitely want to pull this guy back. Okay. And yeah, we'll just keep all the hoggos together. That's safest. Let's cycle through. All units have been considered. Artillery now. Ooh, two of them are low on ammo. That's rough. Um, let's go ahead and drop it on where we know there's going to be some enemy. I'm finally meeting some scattered resistance over here. and Go ahead and give the enemy its turn. Close this video. Fingers crossed. It already doesn't do too much damage. Nice. Ooh, a Stokes Mortar. That's got to be a Stokes Mortar, and it's on the map. I can see it up here. So you can see the flash behind the tree line. Okay, and right there too. Okay. Ooh, another machine gun. Oh, 
I think that's the original one. So our forces held up real well. I don't think we've taken a uh, single SP loss outside of that ATR platoon. Only two units low on ammo. Both headquarters providing supply. We rallied the ATR platoon. Nice turn. Perfect. Look at that. Alright. So I hope the f new format is uh, helpful. I won't be pulling up that Word document in the future. I'll just be uh, using that as my template. And um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of kind of a learn-as-I-go type of thing. I think it uh, streamlines the whole process and helps share um, you know best practices a little bit better that way. And uh, uh, really, uh, I think it'll just make the whole channel a little more robust moving forward. So... Uh, thank you for watching this. All the best from the good captain, and bye-bye.